the circular motion is not limited to objects spinning on the end of a string. It is common in everyday life, when vehicles go around corners, and in items such as washing machines and fans. Planets also move with circular motion within their orbits. When considering circular motion, one cannot merely talk of speed as we do in linear motion. Instead, angular speed must be used. Consider an object moving about a fixed point with a uniform speed. To ensure that an object describes a circular path, a force must act on it to stop it flying off at a tangent. This force acts towards the center of the circle and is called centripetal force. The acceleration of the object is also directed towards the center as it is caused by the force. This is therefore called the centripetal acceleration. Angular speed is defined as the change of angle per second for an object moving about a fixed point. The angle is measured in radians, so angular speed is expressed in radians per second. If s is the length of the arc described by the object, the angle in radians is given as theta equals s over r, where r is the radius of the circle described. By rearranging this formula as shown below, angular velocity can be deduced. The instantaneous linear velocity is at a tangent to the circle at 90 degrees to the center. As linear velocity equals omega r and a equals v squared over r, centripetal acceleration a equals omega r squared over r. In the equation a equals minus omega squared r, the minus sign indicates that the acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle. Newton's second law states that force equals rate of change of momentum, or F, equals ma. This also applies to the centripetal force acting on a body moving with circular motion. As we have already seen, the centripetal acceleration acting on a body is A equals minus omega squared R, or V squared over R. We can substitute this into Newton's equation for force and use the following formula to calculate the centripetal force acting on a body moving with circular motion when it moves with a constant speed. F equals mv squared over r. Objects that move to and fro are said to oscillate. This can apply to anything from a child being pushed on a swing to the motion of a swinging pendulum, and even the pattern of an AC electrical supply. Wave motion can also be described in terms of particle oscillation. One complete oscillation is said to have taken place when a complete to and fro movement has occurred and the body has returned to its original position. The time taken for an oscillating object to complete one full oscillation is called the period. It is measured in seconds. If a number of oscillations are involved, we can work out t by dividing the total time taken by the number of oscillations completed. The frequency of oscillations is the number of complete oscillations undergone by an oscillating object in one second. Frequency is measured in hertz. If an object oscillates with a frequency of 1 Hz, it means that it completes one full oscillation per second. It is therefore clear that one can relate frequency and period easily as F equals 1 over T. Simple harmonic motion is a type of oscillatory movement whereby, during the course of a cycle of oscillation, a body or particle passes from one side of the equilibrium position to the other and back again. A displacement time graph for an object moving with SHM will display a sine curve. It is therefore not unusual to describe the motion of a body oscillating in this way as sinusoidal.
The amplitude of oscillations is the maximum displacement of the object from the equilibrium position. Simple harmonic motion can be closely related to circular motion. This is necessary when considering oscillatory motion quantitatively. It is possible to set up a pendulum bob and a ball on a turntable so that their shadows are exactly in phase. Both circular motion and simple harmonic motion can be said to be sinusoidal. It is therefore possible to use the same equation for the acceleration of a body undergoing simple harmonic motion or circular motion. The negative sign in this equation indicates that the acceleration is directed towards the fixed point. The restoring force is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position and is directed towards it. One possible solution for the equation a equals minus omega squared x is x equals a cos omega t where a is the acceleration and x is the displacement. It is necessary to learn both the equation and the solution. The following derivation is given purely as an explanation. The velocity of an object moving with simple harmonic motion can be easily calculated from a displacement time graph of its motion. The gradient of a displacement time graph gives the velocity of the object at that instant. It is therefore clear that the body is momentarily stationary at points A and C, but moving with maximum velocity at points B and D. The magnitude of the velocity at B will however be the same as that at D, but with the opposite sign due to their opposing directions. A complete cycle of simple harmonic motion can be represented as two pi radians. If there are f cycles per second, we say there are two pi f radians per second. This is the angular frequency. As frequency is the inverse of an oscillator's period, we can also say that omega equals two pi over t. If the total energy in an oscillating system remains constant, we say that the vibrations are free. The energy in the system changes from potential to kinetic and back every half cycle, but the total energy in the system is constant at all times. Oscillations like this can go on forever. In practice, the amplitude of vibrations becomes progressively smaller as energy is lost due to friction between the oscillating body and the particles in the air. If this did not happen, the world would be very noisy, as once set up, sound waves would continue forever. Damping is the process whereby oscillations gradually die out. This occurs due to loss of energy caused by friction. It's sometimes useful to damp vibrations, for example those of a car suspension, so that the car does not continue to bounce for a long period after it has passed over a bump. At the other extreme, suspension can be overdamped, in which case the car will jolt violently when the wheels go over a bump. This can cause damage to the car and discomfort for any passengers it is carrying. Overdamping also means that there is a long delay before the suspension can react to any further bumps. Graph A shows free oscillations in which the vibrations continue at the same amplitude ad infinitum. This is a purely hypothetical situation, as it can only occur when no frictional forces act on the body. Graph B shows lightly damped oscillations, in which the amplitude of the vibrations gradually decreases with time. Graph C shows a system which is critically damped. 
This means that the system returns to its rest position in the shortest possible time without oscillating. Graph D shows a system which has been overdamped, so no oscillations take place, but the system takes a long time to return to its rest position. In order to maintain constant oscillatory motion in a system which contains a degree of damping, an outside periodic force must be applied. The frequency of undamped oscillations in a system which has been allowed to oscillate on its own is called the natural frequency. If the frequency of the applied driving force equals the natural frequency of the system, then oscillations with a maximum amplitude occur. This effect is known as resonance. Resonance will not occur if the frequency of the driving force is too fast or too slow. During resonance, vibrations can build up to dangerous levels. Resonance is evident in many aspects of everyday life. In some cases, it can be very useful, but it can also be detrimental. Washing machines and buses often vibrate violently when the engine or drum oscillates at its natural frequency. A singer maintaining a note which has the resonant frequency of a glass can cause it to shatter. It's also necessary for soldiers to break their march when crossing bridges, in case their steps correlate with the natural frequency of the bridge, causing it to vibrate wildly and collapse. In one famous case, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was caused to resonate as a result of the frequency of the driving force of the wind, and consequently collapsed. Resonance also has many useful applications. In musical instruments, if the vibration of a reed or string matches the natural frequency of the air column, resonance occurs. When this happens, the amplitude of the sound wave increases, and a loud sound is heard. Microwave cookery uses the phenomenon of resonating water molecules in food to cause intermolecular friction and consequent heating. Radios are tuned by making the natural frequency of the electrical oscillations equal to that of the incoming signal so that electrical resonance occurs. In this way, the required frequency is isolated and amplified.